Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to a new video. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about mixing grid synths and kind of um, uh, using mixing tricks to keep them in the background of your mix. And um, we're in specifically gonna be talking about a section of your track where you would also have a main lead. Uh, normally when you don't have a main lead on top, uh, in some cases you might use grid synth a little bit more uh, openly and a bit, little bit more in front of the mix to kind of take up the space um, which is uh, not being used by your main lead uh, but in this case I think it would be more useful to kind of see how they would be mixed in in a situation where they are in the background of the mix uh, behind another lead sound. Um, also I would like to ask you uh, before we dive into it uh, I have been experimenting with the audio lately and I would love to know if you can hear a difference and if so if it's a good difference or a bad difference so uh, please leave a comment um, if you can hear a difference, if you have seen my videos before, uh, maybe you can tell me if the audio is better or worse. I would love to know your thoughts. Um, if there, there is a, a problem now that wasn't before, I can easily get back to the old setup. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, we're going to dive right into it. So let's get started. Alright, um, here's the project we had before. Uh, if you haven't seen the first two parts, I highly recommend uh, you actually go back and listen uh, or watch those parts here uh, to kind of make sense of the project. Um, and for now, I'm going to quickly play it and we'll go into some of the channels and kind of uh, walk you through um, some of the mixing things I did. Uh, yeah, for now, I'm quickly going to play it, as I said again. If you really want to follow this and see how I made all the sounds and how I did the rhythm and kind of stuff like that, uh, please watch the other two videos. I, if I remember, uh, I'll put a link in the description for you or a card above somewhere. Um, but for now, um, I'm gonna play it. Alright, I think that's enough to get a basic idea of what we're dealing with here. Um, again, as you probably know, uh, I've divided up the, uh, the grid synth into two different groups, uh, both with a different function. Um, the one being adding extra rhythm and the other one uh, being enforcing rhythm. If you want to know all about that, um, you should again go watch the other videos. Um, but it is uh, cool to know that um, to enforce this thing, I also added extra mixing uh, things that really emphasize this thing. Um, for example, here I decided to uh, use the high end to add more energy, um, while here we don't use the high end. It's just a small example. Let's dive into the actual mixing part. So in the first one, um, First and foremost, we should actually look at the main lead sound here and in particular to its uh, spectrogram and kind of where it's active in the frequency spectrum. And if we solo it and we listen to it, we can see through the EQing and stuff I did, we're mostly active in this area with some peaks sometimes coming up to around this area here, which is around 3K and then we kind of roll off up until 10k there. So that is the space that is occupied by our main lead. And we kind of want to stay away from that um, with our grid synths. We kind of want to give um, the main lead its own little space in the frequency spectrum where it can really punch through and be clear in the mix. And we don't want to um, abstract it uh, by our background elements here. They should really be supporting it, not overwhelming it. Uh, and therefore, now knowing that we have this uh, part of the frequency spectrum used uh, mainly for our main lead, we can keep that in mind. And uh, the first way I've done that is if we look at this spectrum, I have kind of turned it down a little bit. And uh, if you look at it, you can see that it's fairly active lower in uh, below 1K here. We do have a little bit of overlapping. Of course, you don't have to be precise. Um, 
you can always overlap frequencies and stuff like that. You just don't want to make it too, too extreme. Another way uh, we might um, add extra separation in this case is uh, through the stereo field. I am doing a little bit of stereo processing here. If you load this up, you can see we have very moderate 30% stereo processing here on uh, our main uh, synth here. But if we actually go to um, the stereo processing for this one, we can see we're here at a 100%. So we're much wider in the stereo field. So um, it's actually going to sound a lot more um, in the background and washed out because of the stereo effect. And that is another way we keep our main lead in front of um, our actual grid synth here. Uh, a third way is through uh, reverb and delay. Uh, now I'm not using delay a lot here. As you can see here we are 25%. I think I turned it slightly down here. Uh, actually I didn't. Uh, we're using the same settings here. But just note that there's just a slight bit of reverb on there to make uh, to kind of add a little bit of ambience. What I really want to show you is our delay settings here. As you can see here, we're only using 14% uh, wet signal uh, or 14% dry wet with 20% feedback. So very, very small bit of uh, delay there. And um, if we go into here, we can see we aren't actually using any delay here. And that's because I've actually added delay to separate channels here. And for example, not to these channels. As you can see, these don't have a delay thing. Only this channel has. And here we are actually doubling the amount of delay almost and also almost doubling the feedback. So we're getting a lot more of that delay ambience kind of thing. Especially considering that after this delay here, we're actually going into a compressor. Uh, that really brings up the, the volume of the delay sound. Uh, that's why even with these uh, settings which you would normally uh, think would be pretty moderate we're actually getting a lot of delay for that and again through this delay we're actually creating a little bit more ambience uh, for our grid sounds and therefore a bit more of a background for their grid sounds they sound far away they sound uh, behind us in the mix almost is uh, something you would say so that's this one and that's basically the main focus of this one Another thing I would like to illustrate is uh, that we are um, taking this theory with to a next level with these sounds here, in particular, where we are actually panning these sounds. Now normally you wouldn't take a lead sound and pan them left or right, uh, but for these grid sounds it's actually not only a cool effect, but it also serves, again, the purpose of putting it somewhere in the mix that is not the center point, that is not um, uh, the main part or the main focus of the mix it's uh, slightly to the right or slightly to the left as you can see in this case we went with 30 right and 30 left here and that just makes it kind of bounce between um, the left and the right channel which is again not only a cool effect but also another tool for us to put things in the background of the mix So that's uh, our grid number one. We're basically doing the same thing for grids number two. If we quickly take a look at it, you can see. We're basically doing the same thing here. Um, but because we don't have any compression on this particular one, neither here or here or on any of these channels, I've decided to actually up the delay to 40%. And as I told you in the last one or in the one before, we're actually modulating the delay on or off. Uh, in, in one of the last videos, I covered why we were doing this and how this works. And as you can see, we're actually turning it off at certain points uh, where we don't want the delay anymore. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, 40%, a nice long feedback, which means that it nicely goes through the whole thing here. And again, we're using the same trick where we're panning things left and right um, to give them their own little space in the mix. 
Now, um, these presets actually come uh, prepared pretty well and they have a pretty nice stereo field. So I don't think I had to, to do too much. As you can see, we're not really doing any stereo processing on these. Neither are we doing it on this. Um, we are doing something really cool here. And uh, I kind of want to go over what's going on here. As you can see, we have these two EQs, which kind of seem to contradict each other. Here we're filtering out certain elements and here we're boosting them back in. Uh, but what is happening is that uh, in between them, we're actually downsampling. Um, that, which means that we're actually introducing, reintroducing uh, high-end distortion uh, in this area here. Now, the reason why we have this uh, EQ before it is that we don't want to mix the actual high end of our source sound with the um, the red actually the downsampling here. So what we are doing is we're downsampling a sound that has no high end to reintroduce the high end, and that's why we're doing it this way. Also, this notch corresponds with uh, some problem frequencies which were introduced through the downsampling, uh, some problem frequencies that were crashing with uh, our main lead. So again, same philosophy, what we're basically doing here is uh, not only giving them their own space in the mix, but especially making sure that they don't clash with our main lead here. Even though they don't really overlap, we still have a two overlapping notes that overlap with a uh, part of it here. And therefore we need to make sure that um, Again, this synth sits behind uh, this one and one way we're doing it in this case is to uh, just completely remove any problem frequencies uh, we might have. Finally, again, for the ambience, for the background, uh, we're adding the delay and um, um, we're putting it in the back of the mix. So as you can see, the whole mixing process for these grid synths is based on um, defining what your foreground and background of the mix should be. And um, it is really important that you know which elements are main elements and which elements are background elements. Uh, these tricks can, um, of course, also be extended. For example, if you're use, uh, going to add effect sounds um, in a track and you want to have a really nice heavy eff uh, or track with a lot of effect sounds, then it's really important to know which of the sounds are the central sounds and therefore need to be in the foreground and which of the sounds are actually background sounds and you need to pull back and uh, kind of wash out with reverb, stereo, uh, panning, a lower volume, frequency separation, all the tricks we talked about. Um, so uh, all these tricks can actually be applied to more than just grid synths. Uh, but this is a really cool example because we're um, working with an, a background element to a main lead. Uh, it is really important that in this case the main lead shines through your background elements. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this little mini series about Britsons. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, lately I have been streaming a lot more on Twitch now that we're in kind of a, this lockdown and all the schools are closed and stuff. Um, I've been able to stream a lot more. If you want to hang out with me on stream, uh, there's a link in the description where you can watch me produce live. And um, you can just come in, uh, ask me a question. If your question is interesting enough, I might use it for a tutorial. Often I'm already working on material for tutorials, um, experimenting with different sound design techniques, th those kind of things. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed it, 